Alright, at this point I'm getting close to uh, finishing the matte painting. Uh, there's still quite a few things that I need to address and one is uh, there's some conflicting shadows, there's some conflicting colours that needs a little bit more blending and stuff like that and also I also have a huge amount of layers. Now ordinarily I'd suggest you know grouping stuff which I have to some degree um, but you know a lot of this is unlabeled I've thrown in a lot of assets in here um, and you know this could be a little bit of planning that you you might want to look at but what I'm going to do now is if you are sort of happy with this uh, I'm going to duplicate this document so I've got a backup if I need to edit this for whatever reason but I'm simply going to go to image and duplicate and let's call this uh, matte desert for example we'll give it a name that you can you can thing and um, and just hit OK and that's going to give us a copy of that so we've got one here and we've got one over here and I'm just going to actually um, either merge this all together or what I might look at doing is seeing if I can group big bunches of things together which is probably going to be a little bit more useful for what I intend to do so I happen to know that most of this is going to be um, you know, I want I want the, the the sky plane. You can see there's my two sky planes separately here, but the bulk of this is going to be a single entity image. So I'm just going to shift select all the way up there, just before my sky plane, which is at the back. Right click and go to merge layers, and give it a few seconds because it is quite a large document. Um, let's see if that one's doing anything. There's one sky plane, and there's another sky plane, and here's my background, and also we look at the back here there's my original image so there we have them there um, I might look at leaving these skies as separate entities in case I want to maybe uh, animate parts of that we can get some nice little cloud movement and that sort of thing so for the meantime let's leave that as is now one of the other things I want to start looking at this point is potentially adding a couple of assets which I might want to be animatable um, so we need to really address that as a specific thing and one of the things I would want to do is add a glowing neon sign. Basically, it says diner, except you know, at night time, some of the letters are missing, and maybe it says something like die, something a bit ominous, but kind of fun. So I'm actually going to build this in a separate layer rather than you know having all the background here. I'm just going to start up a new document, so file, new, and let's just build up something that's going to be relatively large in case I want to reuse it, but we can always shrink it down. So let's try HDTV and create that should be you know big enough i'm also going to clear these guides by going to view and let's just hit extras and get rid of that all right so i'm going to create just a a background color so something that's going to be in contrast so i'm thinking probably orange or red for the neon sites sign so i'm just going to give something like a dark blue background and this is just to help us see what's going on it's a bit of contrast um, for the next parts. So the next parts, I, was, I actually want to write the text for the sign. So I'm going to go T for text. We can go to the text key here, and I'm going to type in the word diner. I'm going to put in all caps. A bit hard to see because it's the same color. So I'm just going to hit the move t t uh, key, select T again, and let's jump on here. And there is diner selected right there in white. I'm going to scale this up. Control T or you can change the font. Now I've actually chosen a font that I kind of like and I'm trying to think as far as fonts as far as things like for neon signs and glowing signs like that and also stylistically so fonts are quite important but for this part let's just leave it as that um, but you can always jump in text and you can change your fonts up here or you can even import fonts. Now as far as this goes I actually want this to be the design for it but I actually want like neon tubing on the outside of this. So to do that I'm going to go to my effects button down here, my layer styles, and I'm going to go to stroke. And what stroke's going to do is going to put a line on the outside of your object and you can actually change the position inside, center or outside. Now I definitely want mine on the outside and you can see there it is there and I've also chosen a nice bright color for this and we can change this at another point and also play around with the size. So I want something that's going to be about the width of a sort of neon tube for this. Once I've done that, I'm going to hit OK. And there is my sign. Now I don't actually want the white writing in this case. So over here with the diner selected, I'm going to go to fill 
can drop that to zero and that's going to get rid of the text itself but it's going to leave the layer styles so there's the layer styles there and once I'm actually happy with that I'm actually going to rasterize this so I'm going to right click on the layer and right click and go to rasterize type so now it is actually a rasterize type and I'm also going to right click and go rasterize layer style so what that basically means is this is now let's actually cancel that uh, this is now just a text but it's been converted to a shape which is just the outline of that now what I'm going to do just to add a little bit more oomph to this uh, again this might not come into play if it's a really small item but I'm going to go to my layer styles again and because this is now its own entity I'm going to go to bevel and boss I've selected inner bevel here and as you can see it's at a nice little bevel to this and you can change the lighting position and stuff like that and it's just going to look like it's got a bit of a tubing around that like so and I'm going to hit OK and if I'm happy with that once again I'm just going to right click and rasterize that layer style so you know just trying to simplify things so that's actually going to be my 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 text for this now as with most neon signs they have little points that they're connected to and all that kind of stuff so I'm going to create those on a layer below and I'm just going to go B for brush and I'm going to select a hard round brush to start with and let's scale that down I'm using the square brackets for that and I'm just going to select maybe a dark grey colour for this and I'm just going to put in some points, let's get my opacity up to 100 and I'm just going to put in some points that maybe this neon sign would have connected to um, essentially the, the circuitry in the background for it, it's just a little thing that can help us sell this as a potentially genuine product so I'm going to put a few here and there and everywhere um, I'm actually going to try and line some, most of these up if at all possible because I'm also going to add some lines behind that so I think that should do for the most part there we go and once again I'm also going to go to FX and we're going to go to bevel and emboss and see if we can find something that's going to work for that now by default that's usually white but let's see if we can get something that's going to just give it a little bit of depth we don't want it too, too freaky um, but something that's just going to suggest that it, this is a a um, you know a little entity for that and we probably need to get the size down pretty small and let's get rid of the soften so it kind of looks like little rivets again this this is all based on the, the, the size of your document as well so let's go to smooth there we go that's kind of getting there uh, I might just change the lighting position something like that, I'm going to drop the light one down a bit, great alright, uh, I'm also going to create another layer, put that below and I'm going to do the same sort of thing except I'm going to create the joining lines for that, I'm still using a round brush for this and by selecting on this layer I'm going to go B for brush and I'm going to select and I'm just going to draw some straight lines across of a relative size so remember if you are using the shift key it will allow you to draw a straight line so click and drag and there is a straight line there. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this or you could manually just keep drawing but I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to go to my move tool V. I'm holding down alt and that will allow me to click and drag and as I'm dragging I'm holding down shift just to maintain it so it doesn't move to the left or right. Let's do that again for the lower part and as you can see we're kind of getting these little lines and stuff to say that this is a dinosaur style. Um, so these are all separate layers. I'm going to shift select, right click and merge these into one. So I've got these background bars, I've got these little joining parts and I've got the actual diner text itself. Um, so far that's kind of looking okay. Um, what I'm going to do now is I need to consider what aspects I'm going to animate. So this, these two points here, these holding on points and the background tubes, I'm going to just right click and merge those together trying to simplify down as many layers as possible and let's look at the diner so what I want it to have is basically have it flashing so it just says DI and then the letter E and the NR is not going to flash it's just going to say die kind of a funny uh, post apocalyptic joke so I'm going to grab my uh, in this case I'm going to grab the rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to drag that over the D and the I and then I'm going to shift and also select on the E 
and I'm going to press Command uh, J for jump, and that will copy and paste in place. Um, the other things you could do is you could go cut, and then you can go edit, paste in place, Shift Command V, and that will paste that in place as well. But otherwise, you could reselect. So if there's my D I E, and then the N E R is separate. So let's just name these die ner and this is the bracket or whatever you want to call it nice uh, I'm gonna give this a nice little red color so I can find out with that and let's give this one an orange color and this one a blue color always nice to see that uh, as far as the background I don't need that so let's get rid of that so these entities here let's put them all in a in a group folder and let's call this neon sign lovely all right I'm gonna grab this and I'm going to let's move that into this document there there it is there my neon sign right at the top let's move it there and now I can move that around please forget if you are using the move tool um, auto select is I usually recommend turning that off when we're dealing with complex images like this because if you select somewhere else it will select whatever's behind it for example all right let's see if I can find a location for this so let's do a transform I'm thinking overall maybe on the left or the right or up the top something that's, that's going to stand out let's try up the top here I can always uh, duplicate it and do another one or maybe I'll do two let's do a duplicate straight away and turn the background off let's transform and I've actually got rid of my grids but I should be able to do this and let's just go to distort and see if I can find a location for that or maybe up on the top here would be kinda cool but let's try here for now and shrink that down see if we can emulate the side size of it so fortunately at this point I've, I've kind of got enough information that I can hopefully get this to align. So it doesn't really stand out like that, but you know, probably if we drop it back in. Let's try with the other ones. I do want to find a good good placing for this. And maybe up here and let's do another duplicate. That way we can mess around. A lot of you notice I I do a lot of duplicating just in cases. And a little bit more tweaking as far as the perspective goes. Let's try that one. Not really standing out at the moment, probably needs a backing, but I think when the glow starts happening it should be okay. And let's one more for good luck. Let's see if we can place this maybe uh, somewhere prominent maybe on top of here. It's nice and straight on. Or over here. It does get a little bit, you know, you can get a little bit finicky with this sort of stuff, but, you know, if it's going to be an important aspect, if it's going to sell your image, then sometimes a little bit extra time just kicking something around can help. Alright, let's have a look at all three. That one over there, uh, that's okay. I'm just going to try one more. Maybe. Maybe that top one, and maybe that one. I might actually go for this top one here. Let's do a quick transform, and I'm just going to do a couple of quick adjustments here. a little bit too. I should be zooming in, but I'm very, very lazy when it comes to this kind of stuff at the moment. Um, Alright, let's try that. Um, what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to maybe put a little background board on that. Um, but, you know, let's, let's just scale and fit it again. Sometimes in your, in your mind you get a different idea of what it's going to 
Alright, that kind of works. Um, I'm just going to crop off some of these um, brackets. So let's just, I'm just going to delete those just so it fits in a little bit more. And now what I'm going to do, let's zoom in and start seeing all the dodgy details. Um, I'm going to add little brackets to actually build this into play. So I didn't build that with my actual sign here because I was going to get this to fit in a particular place I wasn't sure of. So, new layout, let's put this behind everything and I'm going to go B for brush like I did before and let's just start building. I'm just using the shift key to draw some straight lines to hopefully try and sell this as being you know, part of the structure for that. Uh, while we're here, let's add a bevel and emboss to that. Sometimes it just helps to sell that, it gives it a little bit of an edge, and I'm, I'm okay with that for now. Great. So, I'm going to have a look at uh, animating that, um, and just to give you an example, I'll do a better job of it once I've finished actually um, animating the um, and changing the colours of everything, but just to give you a quick heads up, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add a um, Let's change the levels. So I'm going to put this below the entire image. And I'm just going to darken everything up for now. There's, there's multiple ways of doing this, and we'll, we'll address that as we go. But I just want to do sort of a darkened version of this image, um, just so we can sort of see how this neon site. So what we more actually what I'm actually using here is a adjustment layer which is completely editable and I'm putting that below the sign because I'm actually going to start animating that sign. Um, Alright, let's see how this goes. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the DI animating. Uh, the NER, I could potentially have that actually have that below this adjustment layer. So let's see how that looks. There we go. It's just making that a little bit darker for everything below. But the DI, I'm going to have this as a glowing thing. So what we can do with this is um, we'll do this in a timeline but I'm going to show you how to do this with an effects channel. I'm going to go to FX or layer style and go to an outer glow and you can see it's already starting kind of got a glow there and it's just going to be a matter of playing around with the spread and the size and then also looking at some of the blend modes. So let's see if we can find one that works. It's a little bit difficult with blend modes because it doesn't have the auto example. So it's probably going to be one of these roundabout screen. Color dodge can sometimes work or overlay is usually quite good but in this case because of the background. So let's try screen for now and let's lower the opacity there. Let's change the color out. I'm probably going to go something a bit more of an orange glow like so. Let's check the spread and the size of that. You don't want it over the top but enough that it's kind of going to show. And you can just check the preview there. Uh, once you're done, there we go. So there it is. There we've got the effect on that, and we can actually animate that effect. It's a little bit too much because it's not really saying uh, die at the moment, but it basically gives you the idea of how we could look at uh, creating a little glowing entity there. And there's our adjustment layer. So during the day, we're probably not going to see it as much as there, and then we can animate that at a later point.